Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are taking a look at these, the brand new Zip 303 Firecrest wheels. We're going to talk about the benefits of wide, low pressure tuber tires, talk about some of the downsides, show you how fitting a tuber tire is on these wheels, and go for a ride and talk about whether these wheels should be on your shopping list this year. Let's roll the intro and take a closer look. Three Firecrest is an iconic wheel set. It was a wheel set that paved the way for carbon fiber wheels at races like Paris-Roubaix and Tour of Flanders. And it was back in 2010 that Fabian Cancellara rode a pair of these Firecrest wheels to victory in these most demanding cobble races. And was the result of years of work by the US company to develop a wheel set tough enough to survive those punishing cobbles and to work with the pro team to educate them to the benefits of an aero wheel that would be tough enough to survive those cobbles. And in doing so, consign the traditional alloy box session rims that were used at races like Paris-Roubaix to the history books forever. At this time, the aero benefits were beginning to be understood for flat stages, but they weren't deemed to be strong enough for races like Paris-Roubaix and Tour of Flanders. So the company had to work really hard and had quite a few failures, it's happy to admit, in developing a wheel set that was both aero and strong enough. And key to that was working with wide, low pressure tires to provide the suspension benefits on the cobbles and then the aero benefits on the flat stages. And the years since, the company has mostly focused on aerodynamics. We've got dimples, of course. We've got those NSW wheels with the wavy rim profiles, apparently inspired by humpback whales. Yes, quite. With these new wheels, the focus is not on aerodynamics, because aero to a large extent is a given these days, it's very well understood and embraced by most riders and bike brands. But instead of these wheels, the focus has been on rolling resistance. And rolling resistance is something that many riders and consumers and bike brands are starting to realize it's a, a key area to exploit, to untap more benefits, to make a bike faster and less effort to ride over rough roads, which most of us these days have to contend with. They are wider and designed for wide tires with a minimum of a 28 millimeter wide tire recommended. They're tubeless only, they're disc brake only, they're lighter and cheaper than the wheels to replace. So quite a lot of improvements. Let's take a closer look at the wheels in detail. So it's an all new wheel set and it really is all new from new hubs to a brand new rim. And headline figures for you, they are 300 grams lighter than the previous wheel set coming in at 1,396 grams on my scales, a little over the claim weight, probably due to the fact they've got the valves fitted already. So probably lighter if you remove the valves. Most of the weight has come from the new rims and they are shallower than the old design, 45 down to 40, and also wider, 30 millimeters on the outside, which is massive. And then inside that internal rim width is 25 millimeters. So that's a real key detail with these new rims. On the outside, we have the same famous dimples the company has been renowned for uh, for many, many years. And then we move on to the hubs and spokes. Got brand new hubs, ZR1 hubs, alloy bodies, removable end caps for fitting different axles, center lock for your disc brakes, and inside they've improved the bearing quality and the seals to ensure that any problems we've had in the past shouldn't be a problem with these. But only long-term testing, we'll find out whether these live up to the durability claims for the company. As well as being lighter, they are also cheaper, coming in at £1,600 for the wheel set here in the UK. So it's still a lot of money, yes, but a lot cheaper than they were in the past. So much more competitive if you're fancying a set of the company's famous dimpled wheels with the latest tubeless wide tyre technology. Right, here we go. Got a set of brand new Michelin Power Road tubeless tyres, not sponsored, just right for testing. Got tyre levers just in case, and a Lisein track pump. So let's fit the tyres, and hopefully it's going to be a piece of cake. One side.
tight. There we go, 50 psi. You had a tire pop onto the rim then. And that is easy. So I'll take the tire off and put some sealant in there and do that again. I'll do it to the other wheel and we'll go for a ride. Let's see how they perform. All right, bumpy along here, but these wheels and tires feel amazing. Really smoothing out the bumps. And these wheels feel so quick and noticeably quicker than the 383S wheels I previously had on the Trek Demani SLR before I swapped the wheels. So definitely quicker, not by a huge amount, a small margin, but it's definitely noticeable. The ride quality with these wide tyres at low pressures is just phenomenal. This Trek Demani is already a smooth bike, but with these tyres and wheels, it's so smooth. But it's still fast as well. So these wheels really do impress. Fantastic quality, easy tubeless, low speed, stiff. Just give great handling on this Trek Demani SLR. Just a really good all round wheel set. Whether you're racing or doing small teams, or just riding out on a Sunday, enjoying the countryside views. God, it really is bumpy along here. Hopefully give you a flavour of my local roads. And that's why wide tyres work so well. They feel great on descents as well. That wide internal width gives great support to the wide tyres at low pressures and prevents the tyre squirming around like when you put a wide tyre on a narrow rim. It gives that tyre plenty of stability. It feels so planted in the corners, you really lean on the tyres, even at these low pressures. Really predictable, uh, loads of traction as well. Just a really nice ride quality. Just a good wheel set for high speed riding, uh, long distance touring. I feel good out of the saddle as well. Plenty of stiffness when you're sprinting and climbing. Lightweight as well, so good when you're climbing if weight matters to you. We all know wide tyres are faster, right? Well, many of us do. Many of us have cottoned on to the benefits of wide, low pressure tyres, but many aren't quite convinced yet. And we're definitely going through a period of change. Um, it's one of the most exciting developments in the road cycling market for the last 10 or 20 years, more so than carbon fibre frames or wired group sets, because tyres and the tyre performance really improves the ride quality, the ride experience, uh, give you more speed, can make riding over rough roads less tiring, less fatigue uh, heavy. And so wide tyres are really beneficial to a lot of people, whether you're racing or doing a sportive. So a lot of people can benefit from the wide tyres, but not everybody is convinced yet. It does seem counterintuitive, I know. Surely a narrow tyre must be faster. And in a velodrome, where it's a wooden smooth track, yes, a narrow tyre at high pressure will be faster. But on a real road, with rough roads like this, rolling resistance of a wide tyre is hard to beat. And it's all down to two things, the contact patch and the casing deflection on a wide tyre. So a key difference is the contact patch, and not the size, because a wide and narrow tyre actually have the same size contact patch, the contact between the rubber and the road, but in the shape of that contact patch. A wide tyre has a short, wide contact patch, flattened across its width. The skinny tyre, by comparison, has a long, thin contact patch. And this difference in contact patch size impacts the roundness of the tyre. The shorter contact patch of a wide tyre means the tyre stays rounder and rolls better. By comparison, the narrow tyre is squashed against more of its length, so the tyre is less round. With that narrow tyre, more of the tyre is in contact with the road, so more of the sidewall is flexing. And when you flex a sidewall in a tyre, you heat it up and you lose energy through heating up the tyre. And that's energy that could be going into forward momentum, but you're actually putting into the tyre by heating up that sidewall. So a wide tyre has that shorter contact patch, so less of the tyre is in contact with the road, so you're heating up less of that sidewall and flexing the sidewall less during the rotation of the wheel. And that is why a wide tyre has less rolling resistance than a narrow tyre. 
It's also to do with suspension losses, which on a wide tire are less than a narrow tire. So simply put, a narrow tire at a high pressure, when you ride along a rough road with many imperfections, you lose energy by the rider and bike being lifted up and over the imperfections. So that's robbing you of forward momentum. Compared to that, a wide low pressure tire can absorb those imperfections in the road and you don't lose energy in the bike and rider being lifted up, so you get more forward momentum, so you go faster or you can go at the same speed for less effort. The company also points to the reduced rider fatigue. So when you're riding along a rough road and if you've ridden along the Paris-Roubaix cobbles, you'll know when you're being bounced around, it's really tiring. You get muscle fatigue and you lose a lot of energy trying to keep the bike um, going where you want it. And a wide tire reduces that kind of vibration and you less fatigue. So at the end of a long ride, if you're doing a sportive or a race like Paris Bay, which is six hours with many cobbles, you're gonna be less tired from being bounced around, jiggled around on those rough roads. So they say, and it's their claims, not mine, that you can save between 40 and 50 watts on a rough road ride. Are there any downsides to wide tubeless tires and these wheels in particular? Well, of course there are. As with any new technology or new trend, there are people who aren't ready for change yet. And that much is clear from reading the comments on some of my other videos on my channel, that some of you have clearly embraced the benefits of wide low pressure tires and will never go back. And some people can't see the reason to change from what they've known and trusted and used for the last 10, 20 years. The US company is being bold and brave and putting all its eggs in this basket and not catering for people who want narrow, high pressure tires these aren't backwards compatible in any way. If you want these wheels, you have to go with the low pressure, wide tubeless tires that they are designed around. So a fairly bold, brave move at the risk of alienating a lot of their existing uh, customer base. So, you know, hats off to them for taking that move. Um, they can't be an easy one. So obvious downsides are they're tubeless only. And if you're not on board with tubeless yet, these wheels won't be for you. You can run an inner tube if you need to get home, but you have to use a tuber tire and that's because of hookless bead. Now the jury is still out on hookless. Uh, some manufacturers are clearly embracing it, Zip, MV, Hunt, but some aren't advocating it yet and there are inherent tire compatibility issues with Continental being the biggest brand that isn't yet endorsing hookless. But things are changing rapidly and what's clear is rim manufacturers are moving ahead at a different pace to tire manufacturers and the standards being put down by the ETRTO, who most tyre and wheel brands to a large extent do follow their guidelines for tyre and wheel rim design, haven't yet kept up. So these standards are being developed and changed. And I was speaking to somebody off the record the other day, and they've just received a draft for changes that are likely to come out next year, which should incorporate hookless, tubeless, and wider tyres. A lot of tyres are still designed to standards that let's be fair, are out of date. So we need the standards to keep up. We need a few more things to fall into place before we have much wider acceptance and easier compatibility. Uh, but apart from the Continental and Challenge, I think, and a few other brands, most tyres are fine, these Mitchell are fine, Schwalbe, uh, Goodyear, lots of other tyre brands that are recommending their tyres with hookless beads but with a stipulation that you don't go above 80 psi. And that is to prevent the tyre blowing off at high pressures that people might want to run. Although, once you realize the benefits of a wide tire are at lower pressures, these are 60 PSI at the moment, um, you won't see any reason to go above that. Another big downside potentially to a wide tire is aerodynamics. A wide tire is a bigger frontal surface area, which means more drag. However, this only really matters at higher speeds and will concern racing cyclists more than normal cyclists who ride at 25 kilometers per hour to pick a reasonable average speed. At lower speeds, aero matters less and rolling resistance actually accounts for a bigger amount of force you have to overcome as a cyclist, transferring your energy into forward momentum. We're also seeing improvements in aerodynamic rim design and these are a really good example of a rim that has been designed around a wide tire. So the overall profile of the tire and the rim are designed to improve aerodynamics at a wide range of your angles. So there we go then, brand new 303 Firecrest wheels, loads of changes, lighter, cheaper, wide tires, tubeless, disc brake only, a lot of changes, which I think are for the better in my opinion. Now I must admit I've been an adopter, I've embraced wide tires and I love tubeless because 
the benefits of tubers are just almost zero punctures and you can run low pressures more easily. When you're riding rough roads like this, um, you can run even low pressures and not worry about uh, pinch flattening the inner tube. So benefits there. The tubeless installation, as I showed you earlier, was a breeze. I've had nightmares in the past with tubeless tyres, installing them, compatibility issues. I won't go into details about how much uh, sweat, blood, tears, swearing I've encountered trying to install tubeless. But I persevered, I've not given up because I knew the benefits of tubeless were always there. And now we're getting to a point where it's much easier. And I think the next year or so we'll see it become even easier as hopefully new standards come out where all tire and rim manufacturers combine on one hopefully universal standard. But these have been a breeze. So easy to install, no issues with air loss. Uh, so far, touch wood, that's not punctured. So all good. Why tires at low pressures? Once you try them, you'll never go back. It's, it makes me think of when I used to race in London on 23 millimeter wide tires at 120 PSI, because that was normal. We didn't know any better. That was what everybody ran. And I went back to my old Super 6 Evo that you might have seen on a comparison video recently. And I put some 23 tires on that and inflated them to 120 PSI and went for a spin. And it wasn't very nice, I'll admit. It wasn't a very nice experience at all. It's hard and jittery and bumpy, especially on this road here. But at the time, didn't know any better. So, you know, you just dealt with it. It was normal, but I won't go back to that. I'd never go back to that because once you tried wild tires at low pressures, it might feel slow because you don't get that sensation of the bike bouncing around on the road, but like a full suspension mountain bike, it's faster than a rigid or hardtail mountain bike. So wide tires are faster than narrow tires and my Strava, my times show that I'm faster on wide tires at low pressures. It just doesn't feel as fast, but what it feels is supremely smooth, plush, compliant, all those sort of words, really comfortable. And comfort is something I myself and lots of people want a lot more from their modern road bikes. They want more speed and you want the performance and aero and that snappy responsive ride, but you want a lot more comfort. So don't be beaten up, especially at roads. I've seen roads get much worse in the time I've been cycling. So road surfaces aren't getting any better. Council budgets have been stretched ever more. So wide tires are an easy way to inject more comfort into your bike. And as most studies show, and I'll put some links down below, rolling resistance is actually lower with wide tyres than narrow high pressure tyres. So they're actually faster. And it's not all about being faster. It's also about going at the same speed, but using less effort to get those speeds. So on a longer ride, you're conserving energy to be less tired, less fatigued at the end of the ride. So that's another aspect that's often overlooked when people put out aero claims about they're this much faster at this speed. But it's also about conserving energy at any given speed to be less uh, tired at the end of a long sportive or race or whatever it might be. The suspension benefits aren't to be overlooked either. When I rode that old Super 6 Evo the other day, I've been bouncing around, I could feel my arms and muscles being shaken around and it's pretty tiring to be honest, even after one hour. But at wide tires, you don't get that um, vibration coming through the bike uh, into your contact points and arms. So you're less tired, less fatigued. And the company claims you can save up to 40 or 50 watts, which is mind blowing if it's true. Um, I'd love to see some independent testing on all these benefits. But you can feel it yourself. You can feel when you go out for a long ride, you're less tired, you're less beaten up. And I mean, what is not to like? Unless you like that hard um, gate-like experience of being shaken around, you want to feel alive or something. So yes. <laughs> so I like your wheels. Now, go back to your wheels. They are cheaper than the old wheels, but they're still expensive at 1,600 pounds, which is a lot of cash. And compared to the 303S wheels I tested previously, they're not a huge amount of difference. These do feel faster though. It might be psychological, but they definitely feel faster. Not by much. So I think if you want best value, those 303 S wheels are a fantastic set of wheels. But if you want the best performance, these definitely offer a bit more performance. They're a little bit lighter. They're definitely faster, so a bit more aero. They're wider internally as well, so they fit wide tires even better and give more support to a wide tire at low pressure. And you really notice the difference through the corners when you're really leaning on the tire in the corners and the high speed situations. So they are better, but only by a small amount. Um, I think these are like the dual race of the wheels in the company's lineup. Well, I guess they've got the NSWs. So maybe the NSW wheels are their dual race. These would be the Ultegra, perhaps. And then the 303 S wheels are the 105 to help you sort of see where they compare. So not massive differences, not uh, night and day differences, but pretty close. So to sum up then, yes, I like the wheels. They're a lot of money, 
but it do go a long way to justifying that outlay. You've got a lot of impressive technology baked into these wheels. Um, if you're ready to embrace the benefits of wide tubeless low pressure tires, which many of you are, a real future-proof wheel as well, I feel. So yes, a lot to like here. Not for everybody, of course, as I mentioned earlier in my downsize section, but yeah, cracking set of wheels, easy to live with. I should add, this not being a long-term review, I've only ridden them for a few weeks, so I will ride them as long as the company lets me hang on to them and give you an update on the bearing life in these hubs, because I know that's been a, an issue in the past for the company, and a lot of you mentioned that in the past, so that's something I need to keep an eye on and just live with them on a more uh, daily basis. I'll be using the bike every day for my um, you know, lunchtime rides and see how I get on in the long term. Now, if you have any questions about these wheels, uh, do get down in the comment section below and ask away. Always happy to help. If you just want to rant about the price, then maybe do that somewhere else. Um, but yeah, hopefully this review, this first ride has been useful and interesting for you. Um, but stay tuned for a longer term update on these um, in a couple of weeks time. You thought I'd forgotten, hadn't you? The free hub sound test. So let's do it. You ready? Got your speakers turned up? Give a crank to spin. That's a very high-pitched sound. What do you think? Anyway, that's my first ride on these brand new wheels. A full review coming up soon. Make sure you like my video, enjoy watching it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Any questions, put them down below. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time. Noisy, right, moth.